Hi guys, in this video I'll show you how I created the scene in Blender. I used uh, hand painted textures, grease pencil and some interesting NPR lights in Blender to achieve this look. Even though this is a really simple setup, but I think this is really powerful when it comes to creating these painterly like environments. To be honest, the result really surprised me even because when I was done with the painting the environment, I was I thought that this is it, like uh, this is going to be the video. But then I played around with the lights and different settings in Blender to push the result even more. And the result really surprised me with what the lights in Blender can actually do. It really can transform your 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 outcome and can push it even more. If you want to get this file, you can get this one as well as all the previous exclusive blend files from my Patreon. The link will be in description. So first I will be showing you my painting process and then I'll show you how I set up the lights in Blender and how I use different settings in Blender to achieve this look. Even though this is not a complete beginner video but I will try my best to explain whatever I can throughout the video. Because like I said before, this is a really simple setup. We are not really using any any advanced Blender tools. If you want to watch any specific part of this video, you can also use chapters. So now let's get started to this video. So we are going to paint this scene in viewport. So make sure you have all these settings turned on. Color set to texture, background viewport and cavities turned on. I will turn on the screencast keys add-on so that it's easier to follow along. First I'm going to select the object and then I'm going to sample the color from reference image and then I just use the paint bucket tool to fill in the color in viewport. I'm going to do the same with this uh, this orange fridge. Sample the color, I just drop it in the viewport to paint the fridge. Similarly, I'm going to repeat the same process with the other objects. Now when we have to paint the specific part of any model, then first we select these faces. We go to sample the color from the reference image and then make sure this is turned on, this blue icon at the top, so that only selected faces will be painted. And then you can just drop it in the viewport to paint the faces. So now similarly I'm going to paint the other faces as well. Now let's select the faces of these cabinets, these boxes. First we select these faces in edit mode. Make sure you don't leave any face behind you, select all of them. Once they are selected, now we will sample the color from the reference, just like we did previously, and just drop that color in viewport. We have left one face here, so we have to go back and paint it again. Okay, now it is looking good. Now let us do the same for these, uh, these lower faces. We will need a darker shade of blue for these faces because 
because it will not catch the direct light from the window. So we will be using a darker version of blue here. So what we are doing here is we are trying to paint the scene in edit mode because it is much more easier to, to paint the selected faces because once we are done painting the scene in edit mode we can then go to we can then go and use the paintbrush to render this whole scene even more. But that does not mean we just randomly use color for all the faces. We have to make sure that the faces which are more exposed to the light source are have, a, have been assigned with more brighter color and the one who are more exposed to the shadow should be more darker. Like the bottom of the objects will not catch much more light so they should be more darker color and the, the top of the top faces of the objects will be exposed to more light so we have to make sure that those faces are more bright. We also have this reference image so we can also get some help from it to decide which color we want to use. After sampling the color from the reference image I often increase the saturation just a little bit to make the to make the color pop to to make the whole scene more cartoony. So like I said before the some of these corner inside faces will not be able to catch the direct light which is coming from the window. So we have to make it a little more darker than the base color. And then we have the faces which are exposed to the to the direct light so we'll make them a little bright. As you see here I'm trying my best to not use a paintbrush and just to try to get this painting done as much as I can in just edit mode. So now we can finally use our paintbrush to paint the rest of the scene. First I'm going to start with the with the floor 
I'm going to select the, all the faces, all the bottom faces. And now we just sample the color and just uh, try to blend these shadows. Start with the darker gray, the darker shade of this brown color and just uh, try to blend it with the lighter shade. We also have to make this uh, the shadow softer as we see in the reference and it also looks really good. We also have to paint the bottom of fridge which will not catch any light so we have to make it a lot more darker. We can even use black color for this. Now for the lighter color which is exposed to light, I just increased the brightness. Now we add even more brighter shade of this, the light color. Now I'm just going to speed up this whole process because uh, I will just be selecting the faces in edit mode and then coming back to texture painting tab and use my brush to paint the rest of the scene. For this part we can we can take the help of the reference image and try to keep the scene look as good as we can. For the highlight I'm using the pure white color which makes the fridge look very shiny. It's just like painting on a canvas, but it's just the canvas is in 3D now. But you can use your painting skill very easily here. You can push the colors, you can increase the saturation, or you can even stylize the shadows and the light areas. Make sure you, you use the darker gray for the corners because they won't be catching light. It doesn't have to be perfect, definitely there will be some areas that we will miss out on, but that is okay. As long as we get most of the part of this scene, that's good enough.
after you're done with your painting make sure you save all the images and then you save the whole file now we are going to draw over this scene with the help of grease pencil to add a grease pencil object press shift a and add a grease pencil blank I'm going to use the offset value of 0.005 because that always works just fine for me. Also make sure you turn off the the lights in the in the layer panel so that the lights do not interact with the grease pencil lines. Now I'm just going to randomly draw over these walls. I'm going to draw just something cartoony to make this scene look more NPR. Now I'm just just drawing these random lines with grease pencil to give it uh, to give this whole scene a more of a sketchy look.
Now let us open the shader editor. Now connect these image textures to the principal BSTF so that we can see the image textures in render view as well. Now I'm going to import the different kind of world setting from my previous project files. This world setting will make sure that the colors of the world setting do not affect the colors, the image textures of our main scene. So that we have a separate control over the over the colors of main scene as well as the world setting. I have already showed this world setup in my previous videos. If you want to see, you can check out my other videos. Now let us add sunlight and place it right at the window so that light rays come directly into the room through the window. We also have this option of ray tracing in Blender 4.2, so make sure you turn it on. And in color management, make sure you select the standard mode, which is uh, which makes the colors pop a little more for the NPR projects. Now when you change the light color, you can see the, the light color changes affects the, the image textures here. Now let me show you this uh, interesting effect with the grease pencil that we can do for this scene. First we are going to change the color of the grease pencil lines in the material properties. Now we are going to add this glow effect to make these grease pencil lines glow. This makes this whole scene looks even more magical now. Now I'm going to add the bloom effect in the compositor. In previous Blender versions, we had the we had this effect in the render properties, but now we we have to use it in the compositor. So what we have to do is just add the glare node and put it between these two nodes, and select the bloom. And when you decrease this threshold value, you can see the glow effect coming up. Now this makes the scene look even better. We can also change the contrast of this whole scene. We have a lot of different settings here. This is the medium high contrast. And the light is also real time so you can move it around and play with this whole thing. The bloom effect really, really makes the scene a lot more magical than it already was. We can change the color of the lights and, and create different kind of mood with our scene.